Hi Internet, my name is Tim Downs and this is an update of an older video I did on how to replicate Maya's live blend shapes in Blender. In recent updates of Blender, they got rid of a really important node called Transfer Attribute and replaced it with Sample Index. And so that whole video has pretty much been obsolete ever since and now I am going to demonstrate how to do that. If you're unfamiliar, you can watch the old video, see an explanation for what live blend shapes are and how they can be applied to a rig and all that. I don't really want to make this video quite as long as that one was, so I'm going to try to gloss over that, but still try to give a quick explanation. Basically, you can duplicate a model, rig it, and have whatever you do to it show up on your main model's rig. Uh, this helps things with keeping things multi-layered and versatile without overlapping weights or influences getting in the way of things. Also, shout out to this guy who basically explained the entire thing that I figured out about a month ago, and I just realized that he commented it all down here when people were asking me, Hey Tim, everything's been updated. They got rid of the node. How do we do it now? Um, I'm sorry for the wait, and I'm sorry you needed to wait for some guy in the comments to <laughs> explain it. Um, uh, this isn't the full picture though, so I'm going to try to real quickly explain how you can do this. Uh, more like the last time where you can do this as many times as you want and uh, control it with the modifier panel rather than just geometry nodes. So let's go to Blender and create a monkey just so we can have something to work with. I'm going to move it here, duplicate it once. Actually, let's duplicate it twice. And in one, let's say uh, we're rigging her uh, eyebrows or something. So let's, if I can turn on proportional editing, do that. And then in our other model, go here. Let's say we're going to do stuff to her ears. Let's say, uh, move that here and maybe even blow it up a little bit. So these are gonna be our two targets for our main model, which is what we're going to make our geometry nodes for. I'm gonna go here, new, go to geometry nodes, and here we go. Excuse me, didn't mean to do that. So let's create a set position node because that is essentially what's going to be our final output for all of this. So let's get a object info as well as an index and a position. The reason we need index is because instead of transfer attribute, which is gone now, we're gonna need sample index and set this to vector and point, connect the geometry. And for what model we want, let's select one of our copies of Suzanne and we're gonna want position info and the index here. Um, if you don't input anything here, it's just gonna always stay at zero. So you have to have this input here. I, I'm pretty sure it's taking an index of each vert in the model or it's taking the index of this object so that way it knows exactly what it's getting positioned information from but if we're also putting in this geometry input then basically this is just how you do this without transfer attribute um, it's all the information that we're going to carry on over to our main model so we're going to use mix vector and put that here and input position here. And then we're going to actually, no, not duplicate that. We're gonna need vector math. And put this here and input our original and we're going to subtract. We're subtracting all the remaining information about geometry position between these two models, which is otherwise identical. Um, and subtract it so that way all we're getting is the difference between these two not the whole thing but just the difference so basically deltas basically for all the the vertices and their positions in here um so that's why we need to subtract the last time i did it with color nodes uh which was you know not wrong but a little redundant the way you were constantly adding then subtracting this way you can just mix but then always make sure that you keep only the delta only the difference between the two and and put that to our offset rather than our position last time we did position because we were inputting all position information back into it 
This time, now that we've subtracted it from the start, we can just put it in the offset. Keep our original position information and add or blend between the difference. So now we can control that right here. Nice and easy. But what if you want to do it again with, say, another model? Well, we're going to just copy all of this and then set it to our other object. And all we have to do now is take the subtracted or the, you know, the difference in geometry, all the deltas, and then add them together. So we're going to duplicate, add, put them together, and now we can blend between both shapes. And that's about it. That's the new way of doing it now uh, since they got rid of transfer attribute in recent versions of Blender. And better yet, you can create a input value for the modifier so that way you can control this in just the modifier panel over here without having to open up geometry nodes like say you're rigging or you're you're animating or something like that you don't want to go here every single time you want to add a new object although you are going to have to if you want to create a new factor slider here um, but that's it so now you can just in any mode really anything that has this modifiers panel here now you can just open that up and control this you can even keyframe it and animate it if you want make it basically work like blender's shape keys but really the whole point of this is in real time now you can just do whatever you want to the target models and it'll show up here in real time so you can just you know you can create a rig for each of these and have that carry on over to this. Sometimes rigs or parts of rigs will overlap and intersect with each other and make things really difficult and really complicated, especially with weight paints. Like say you want you know, values for the eyes and the eye socket and then the eyebrow and then the cheekbone. Well, you're gonna be taking and, and giving a lot of weight values between all of those and try to strike a balance. Whereas you can just make duplicates have different rigs for different chunks of the model all layered together and equally deform your main model. So yeah, that's the new way of doing it. I've seen some other methods going around lately that use uh, named attributes where you duplicate the model and create an entire new uh, attribute here that it, and then delete the model, which I don't see the point of because it's like they're saying, hooray, you can use geometry nodes to just make shape keys, which I don't see the point of because you have shape keys. You could just do that in Blender. The whole point of this is uh, the interactivity between the two models being visible and in real time, uh, as well as you know the, the versatility of, of controlling how much you want one to affect it versus another. So, yeah, there, there's a whole lot of ways of doing things. Um, I prefer this personally, and I, I'm sorry for the wait. I wanted to wait until 4.0 came out because I was real excited about the tools updates. But unfortunately, that in hindsight, I should have seen that coming in that it's only good for when you're in edit mode uh, because you're editing geometry. You're not editing objects. You're editing vertices, edges, faces, normals, things like that, all within edit mode. Um, whereas this whole system relies on an object, a different, you know, a, you know, a duplicate of our deformed model that has the same vert count, the same indices, uh, the same, you know, geometry, same topology, everything. It has to be identical or else it's going to break. Um, but, you know, it has to be a separate object as well. So... You know, it's I, I, you can do it however you want. I'm sure there's better ways of doing it. Um, one thing I really wish you could do is if every time you duplicated something with an input, it would duplicate that input as well. So like, let's say, you know, I've got this all set up. If I want to duplicate this again, it's not going to create a new input automatically for all of these. Um, that would be really nice because then all you'd have to do, if you want to, you know, duplicate the model again, create a new target, then all you have to do is go to geometry nodes, select this, and then just, just duplicate the group. As a matter of fact, you can also make this uh, a node group. So you can just you know, make it like this. 
nice and easy. Even input the, uh, the object identifier here. So that way, every time you do it, you can just, in this main panel, just input what object you want and then set the factor. Not as simple as that, though, unfortunately, uh, for now. So let's try to get back to what it looked like. Yeah. So, yeah, sorry for the wait. Sorry for uh, just, uh, you know, having to, you know, again, I, I'm just repeating myself here. Uh, I tried to keep this shorter than the last video, but I also want to provide a thorough explanation as to why we do things, how things work, um, things like that. So, yeah, let me know if you have any questions. Um, and I'll try to get back to you. I'm sorry. I'm not like a full-time YouTuber or tutorial maker, but I did notice, this is another thing, I noticed that because of all those other tutorials going around about using geometry nodes to do shape keys or to do blend shapes or things like that, and they're all things that I personally just don't agree with in terms of technique or function or, you know, it's how it would work efficiently. Um, this would be otherwise be uh, the the old video would otherwise be the first thing you'd find if you looked up geometry nodes blend shapes uh in blender uh but it's old and it doesn't work anymore so i just wanted to at least for you know update sake because everybody i think is going to be switching to 4.0 pretty soon because it is pretty cool um now everybody's going to want to refer back to that video if they're if they're Googling, you know, how to do this and it won't work unless you, unless you go down and read the comments and see, you know, basically it all spelled out by someone who did get back to them in way less than let's, uh, what is it a year? Yeah. Sorry about that. So, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm trying my best here. So yeah, let me know if you have any questions. And if you're interested in any more of my work, you can take a look at my demo reel and my portfolio at timdowns.info. And I hope that this was a help to you. And uh, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Bye.